Ran out. This hadith, uh, tonight's hadith, although it's, it's short, it's heavy. And the supplementary handouts, they're actually, there's a lot. So I didn't make as many copies. However, if anyone wants the supplementary handouts, if they write down their email address, I can forward them to you. I, I have them. That hair there has the supplementary connected to it, actually. <laughs> it's a lot. Another one? Left. No one. Huh? This is mine. Oh, yeah. This is extra. You need an extra one? No. Everyone has? Take your let me let me have that one you have. Because cause you got now that and stuff on that. Who who needed one? Who needed one? If anyone needs one, have it here, shall we? Alright. <clears throat> Bismillah walhamdulillah salatu was salamu ala rasulillah. وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع هداه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه In the name of Allah, all praise is due to Allah. May the salat and salam of Allah be upon the Prophet Muhammad, his household, his companions, and everyone who follows them in righteousness until the last day.
certain that I would meet my reckoning. By the way, just as a side, benefit, dhanantu, <coughs> the word dhan in Arabic. Usually when you hear dhan, what do you think of? <coughs> dhan. What is dhan? The word dhan, usually when it's used, is used to express something that we have doubt about. Mm. Allah says, وَمَا يَتَّبِعُوا أَكْثَرَهُمْ إِلَّا الظَّنِّ and most of them do not follow except dhan. وَإِنَّ الظَّنَّ لَا يُغْنِي مِنَ الْحَقِّ شَيْئًا And dhan, conjecture, is of no avail against the haq, the truth. So, how do we understand it? This man, he used in this verse, Allah used in this verse, the statement, mentioned the statement of this man, he will say, إِنِّي ظَنَنْتُ Verily, ظَنَنْتُ I thought. But here they translate it as, I was certain, I knew. Hmm. The scholars mention two qa'idas, two principles regarding the word dhan in the Qur'an. Alhamdulillah, Ramadan is quickly approaching. Many Muslims are going to be starting the Qur'an if they weren't doing it throughout the year, reading it from the beginning to the end. And you're going to come across these words. Now when you see this word, when you're reading the Mus'haf, you're going to know, you're going to understand what exactly Allah is talking about when you see it. What is the qa'idah? Abdahaq, he said... Every time dhan is mentioned in the Quran and it's associated with the believer, it means yaqeen. And every time dhan is mentioned in the Quran associated with a disbeliever, it means doubt. That's one qaida. Another qaida they mentioned, and this was mentioned by Mujahid. ظَنُّ الْآخِرَةِ يَقِينٌ وَظَنُّ الدُّنْيَا شَكٌ The dhan that is associated with the hereafter means yaqeen, certainty, and the dhan that is used or mentioned in reference to the dunya means shak. Side, that was a side benefit. So that's the first thing I want to establish tonight, inshallah, in our class. The belief in Allah on the last day is the foundation for every good. And this should be the driving force behind the good deeds that we do. Seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seeking Allah, not seeking anyone else. As the Salaf say, Kun ma'allah bila khalq. Be with Allah as if there is no creation. Wa kun ma'al khalq bila nafs. And interact with the creation without any nafs, without any selfishness. As if yourself didn't exist. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever believes in Allah on the last day, let him say what is good or remain silent. We learn from this that being silent has no virtue in and of itself. As sukut or assent, silence, be that he, in and of itself, it has no virtue. It has no virtue. For this reason, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, as sukutu bila qira'a. Silence without recitation, wala dhikr, and without remembrance, wala dua, and without supplication, laysa ibadah. It is not worship. Wala ma'muran bihi, and nor is this something that we are ordered to do. Bel yiftah bab al waswasa. Rather, it opens the door to whispering. Fal ishtighalu bi dhikrillah. So being busy with the remembrance of Allah is better than being silent. Remember this. Being silent has no virtue. If you're sitting by yourself, you should not just be silent. Mute. You, your lips should be busy with something. Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al-azim. Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah, astaghfirullah. Huh? You should, silence has no, laysa lahu fadl, it has no virtue. Hmm. However, if you don't have anything good to say, oh, yeah. then be quiet, don't say anything. Hmm. Imam al-Shafi'i, he said, rahimahullah, this means what? That you have to train yourself. That before you talk, <coughs> think. Think about it. And ask yourself a question. Is what I'm going to say, is it harmful? 
If it's harmful, then obviously don't say it. And if the answer is no, it's not harmful, ask yourself another question. Is it beneficial? Because something can be good, but depending on the time, the place, the situation, it may not be beneficial. For example, on the day of Friday when the khatib is given the khutbah, at that time it's not beneficial to read the Quran. Mm -hmm. At that time it's not beneficial to read books of knowledge. At that time it's not beneficial to give the salam to the brother to your right and give salam to the brother to your left. Mm -hmm. At that time it's not for you to enjoin the good and forbid the evil. Mm -hmm. Let the imam, the khatib do that. Mm -hmm. Right? So you have to ask yourself, what I want to say, is this harmful? Answer is no, alhamdulillah. Next question. Is it beneficial? There's some things you just don't talk about. Like a man on the wedding and his wedding night. He's with his wife on the wedding night. He's talking about the fire. Anar! Anar! The fire. That's not what you're talking about on your wedding night. That's not the time to talk about anar. Right? There's a time and a place for everything. <laughs> right? So the Prophet said, whoever believes in Allah in the last day, let them say what's good and remain silent. This tongue, this tongue, even though it's only one. Look at, we have two eyes, we got two ears, we got two hands, we got, but the tongue, we only got one. That's enough. This tongue puts a lot of people in trouble. It doesn't even have a muscle. But look how much damage it can cause. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, La khayr fi kathir min najwafin. There is no good in much of their private conversations. <laughs> Illa man amara bi sadaqa. Except for those who enjoin charity, encourage one another to do charity. Aw ma'aruf. Or to do an act of ma'aruf, of good. And of course, ma'aruf is what the sharia deems to be ma'aruf. What the Islamic legislation deems to be ma'aruf. O islah bayna nas or reconciling between people. Woman yaf al dalika and whoever does that, wabtiga'a mardatilla fa sofa no tihi ajuran adima. Whoever does that seeking the pleasure of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely give him a tremendous reward. Sufyan al Sawri he said, Alaika bi kilat al kalam, yalinu kalbak. He said, you should have or you should only use a little bit of words. It will cause your heart to be softened. Wa alayka bi is samt. And you should be uh, samt, be quiet for lengthy periods of time. Keep in mind what we already said about being silent. Huh? He said, tam lakul wara. If being silent for lengthy periods of time will help you to uh, acquire or have wara. And that is, for lack of a better translation, piety. And then he said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, وَلَا تَكُنْ حَرِيسًا عَلَى الدُّنْيَا And don't be someone who is eager over the dunya. So believe in, whoever believes in Allah on the last day, let him say what's good or remain silent. Hopefully this is good. And we have to remind ourselves of this, all of us. We have to remind our wives and our children with this. Even on the... Uh, uh, you ever notice on the phone, when you're on the phone with somebody and you're talking, it gets to a point in the conversation where one of the two people becomes quiet. Mm -hmm. And usually we feel the need to talk, to fill in that gap. Because we don't, it doesn't feel comfortable to stay on the phone in their silence, right? So we feel an obligation, a need to now talk, to, to fill in the, the empty space. If it gets to that point in the conversation, probably an indication is good to <laughs> say what? Bye. Take care. I'll talk to you another time, inshallah. Right? Uh, so this is something we have to take into consideration. And keep in mind something else, brothers and sisters of Islam. The hadith says, Man, man kana yu'minu billahi wa bil Whoever believes in Allah in the last day. Every time this is mentioned, it's mentioned three times in this hadith. This hadith is a proof that these things, these khisal, these characteristics that are mentioned in this hadith, they are from Iman. They are a part of faith. They are a part of faith. Just like the verse when you hear in the Quran, Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu, O you who believe, 
anything you in that verse when you see Yahweh Levina Aminu, what's going to come afterwards is either an order or a prohibition. If you fulfill the order, that will be a cause for you to what increase in iman. And if you do not comply with that order, that will be a cause for you to decrease in iman. Same thing is true here. The next thing the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيُكْرِمْ جَارَهُ In this hadith, he mentioned جَارَهُ, his, his neighbor. Uh, in one narration, فَلْيُحْسِنْ إِلَى جَارِهِ Let him be good to his jar, his neighbor. This is a big uh, issue, uh, brothers and sisters. This is something we don't talk about a lot, but the issue of the neighbor in Islam is a big deal. Hmm. Is a really, really big deal. And the hadith didn't say your Muslim neighbor. That means what? Anyone who's your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Even if he's a Kafir. If he's a Muslim neighbor, that means what? He has even more rights. He has the right of Al-Jar, the neighbor, and he has the rights that come along with uh, being Muslim. Look what Allah says in this verse is in Surah Nisa, verse 36. The scholars say this is the verse regarding the ten rights. The ten rights. Qala ta'ala, wa'abudu Allah, wa la tushriku bihi shay'a. Worship Allah and don't associate any partners with him. Wa bil walidaini ihsana. And be good, dutiful to your two parents. Wa bi dhil qurba, wal yatama, wal masakin, wal jari dhil qurba, wal jari al junub. Allah says what means worship Allah and do not associate partners with him. That's number one. So that means what? He mentioned his right first. Why? Because Allah's right is the greatest of the rights. The greatest right is the right of Allah. Remember this. We, we, know, we say this, and I see you shaking your head like, yeah, well, I agree with that. But when you look at the people today, our actions reflect something different. Mm -hmm. We act as if our rights are more important than Allah's right. We, if someone violates our rights, we got a problem. How dare he? How dare she? Mm -hmm. Right? I'm going to get my right. But when Allah's rights are violated, some of us don't feel not one way or another about it. Mm -hmm. Oh well, that's between him and Allah. <laughs> oh well, yeah, to each his own, right? Very important. We don't we don't feel uh, that this is something uh, serious, right? Allah's right is mentioned first. Then the next is your parents. Even in the books of adab, in the books of etiquettes, you'll notice there's a pattern. When they talk about good character and good mannerisms, usually they mention the parents first. They mention the parents. Why? Because Allah in the Quran, after he mentioned his right, he mentioned the right of the parents. And after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as far as the people of this world, there's no one in this world who is more beneficial to you than your parents. Right? So the parents are then mentioned. After the parents, Allah said in this verse, and then he said, and be good to your parents. Then he said, relatives. So the rest of the family, right? Your aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, right? So on and so forth. The orphans. The needy and your relatives who are your neighbors. Right? The, relative, the needy and the relatives that are your neighbors. And the neighbors who are not your relatives. You know, in some of the books, the scholars differed as to who... Who was the neighbor? Some said it's 40 houses to the right. Some said it's 40 houses to the left. Others said it's everybody in your city. Everybody in your town is considered your neighbor. Right? Uh, and the neighbors who are not your relatives, your friends who are close, the traveler, and your slaves. And indeed, Allah does not love the arrogant prideful ones. Hmm. Look at this hadith. This hadith is collected by Imam Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ma zala Jibreel yusini bil jar. The angel Gabriel, he kept coming to me and advising me about the neighbor, 
hatta dhanantu annahu sayuwarrithuhu until i thought until i believed that the neighbor would become an a what an an heir someone who will inherit from us when you die your family does what they divvy up your wealth and they as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered and they distribute it that means what the neighbor is so close that he's kind of like family this is why the arabs they have a proverb they say al jar qabl al dar mm -hmm. the neighbor is 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 it comes or is more important than the actual physical structure the the house what that means you should be more concerned about the people who live around you than you are about the house itself what good is having a big nice house if the people that live around you are all evil hmm. you go out of town travel your wife and children home and the people plotting <laughs> or all y'all go on a trip they know you're gone and they're like yeah we saw them uh last week come home with that 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 all those nice furniture and big flat screen tv and all that other stuff, right? We're going to get them. Right? We're going to get them. Uh, the neighbor has a, a, has a big... has a. What does that mean? I mean? If taking care of the neighbor and being good to the neighbor is from Iman, that means what? The opposite is true. Which is, if you harm the neighbor, disrespect the neighbor, this is also from the causes that will decrease the Iman. Look what the Prophet said. He said, Wallahi la yu'min. Wallahi la yu'min. Wallahi la yu'min. By Allah, he doesn't believe. By Allah, he doesn't believe. By Allah, he doesn't believe. The one who goes to bed at night with his stomach full while his neighbor is hungry. How can you know whether your neighbor is full or hungry or not if you don't even know your neighbor? You don't know their name, their first name, their last name. You don't know how many children they have. You don't know what's going on. That means what? As Muslims, this is this is one of the areas where we can sh represent Islam, and you and we and if we followed Islam in this regard, we would outdo all the other people when it comes to this matter. When someone moves to your neighborhood, what's where's the harm? And you're going to that person. Hello, sir. Hello, ma'am. I'm my name is Muhammad. I'm Abdullah. I live three houses down, right? That blue house right there. We saw that you're, you know, you're here to the neighborhood. We just wanted to welcome you. Matter of fact, my wife made a nice cake for you and your family. Mm -hmm. You know, hope you enjoy. Please, if there's anything you need, just feel free to come. You know how that would affect somebody, especially here in the West? People don't do that no more. They don't do that no more. There was a time in this country, in this, we, they, they still do it in some places in the South. They mm -hmm. call it Southern hospitality. There's a reason why it's called Southern hospitality, because people in the North don't do it, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's become something of the past. There was a time when everyone knew each other's last name. We don't know each other's last name. We could be living in the same building next to someone for a whole year, and we don't know their name. If we know their name, it's because we saw it in the mailbox. Mm -hmm. There's a story about a woman who died in England. She was dead for a whole month in her apartment. No one knew she was dead except the mailman could no longer fit stuff inside of the mailbox and the stench of her body was coming out. Mm. That's how they discovered that she was dead. Aside from that, no one knew and no one cared. Right? Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Khayrul ashab indallahi khayruhum li sahibihi the best of companions in the sight of Allah is the best of them to his companion. Wa khayrul jiran and the best of neighbors in the law in the sight of Allah khayruhum li jarihi is the best of them to his neighbor. Mm -hmm. What are some of the ways we can be good to our neighbor? Uh, you, we just had a big snowstorm recently, right? When I was a kid, my grandmother would make me and my brother go out and shovel, and she she would also tell us to go shovel the yards of the single elderly women on the block. Mm -hmm. Go down there and, and shovel Miss Jones' yard. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't dare ask Miss Jones for some money. Mm -hmm. You would never say, I, I need to get $10 for this. Mm -hmm. These little kids today, they ain't trying to shovel nobody's <laughs> stuff that they ain't, unless they get paid. You had to do it. That was part of respect. Mm -hmm. Right? Shovel in the yard. You see there's a flat tire. You can help out with that. You know? Mm -hmm. Something's going wrong. Help your neighbor out. Look out for them. If they're sick, visit them. Mm -hmm. These are ways that we can... Help our neighbor. And again, we said if the neighbor is Muslim, oh, mashallah, then they have even more rights. Mm -hmm. They have even more rights on you. Even our masjid, we might not live physically in this neighborhood, 
But because we attend the Salah in this masjid, the people who live around here are what? Mm. Our neighbors. Mm. So when we park our cars, we have to be mindful of our neighbors. We're not blocking anyone's driveway. We're not inconveniencing our neighbors. If we're ever having some function outside, mm. we're not being too noisy mm. that would annoy the neighbor. These are all the things that we have to take into consideration. And these are things that Islam has enjoined upon us. The last thing I'll mention about the issue of the neighbor, it's a bit beautiful benefit. Actually, our, our brother, one of our brothers who was here, he sent it to me recently. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad Amin al-Shamkiti, rahimahullah. He was commenting on the statement of Allah in Surah uh, At-Tahrim. وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِمْرَأَةَ فِرْعَوْنَ Allah puts forth an example of, for those who believe, the woman of Fir'aun. Right? Meaning the wife of Fir'aun. Is قَالَتْ When she said, is قَالَتْ رَبِّ بِنِ لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ My Lord, build for me with you a house in Jannah. Muhammad Amin al-Shamkiti, who, you know, who you are, you've heard of this name before. Yeah. Who is he? Yeah. Sheikh Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Shanqiti Rahmatullahi Alayhi is, this was an imam. This man was one of the greatest scholars of tafsir. One of the greatest scholars of tafsir. What made his tafsir so unique? The scholars, when they explain the Quran, they say tafsir of the Quran Huh? The highest level is tafsir of the Quran with the Quran itself. Mm. Tafsir of the Quran with the Sunnah. Mm. Tafsir of the Quran with the sayings of the Sahaba, mm. right? In consensus. The tafsir of the Quran with the Arabic language, right? The highest is tafsir of the Quran with the Quran. This man, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, Sheikh Muhammad Amin al Shanqiti, he authored a book called Adwa al Bayan where he explained the Quran with the Quran. The mm. Quran. This man was so familiar with the Quran. Mm. I'm gonna tell I'll tell you something you you may not believe because it's something unheard of in these days. His son, who's alive right now, said about his father that for more than 20 years, I saw my father. Every night, he went inside of a room in the house, and then he would come out shortly before Fajr. Mm. And he said, I asked my father many times, Father, what do you do in this room? Because he went in by himself. And he said, don't worry, it doesn't, it doesn't concern you. Mm. And he said he kept telling him this over the years. And then one day, he said, I said to my father, I ask you by Allah, Ask <laughs> Billah. Ask you by Allah, what do you do when you go in this room? His father said, I'll tell you, but don't tell anybody. Don't mention it to anybody. He said, for over 20 years, his father went in that room and began reciting the Quran and didn't come out until he finished. Mm. <laughs> you think that's strange? Mm. There are Sahaba who did that. Mm -hmm. But when you read his tafsir, you say to yourself, this man, th th that story is not unbelievable when you read his tafsir. Mm -hmm. The way he explained the Quran, Allahu Akbar, he will, he will, he will say things, he will, he will say this word is mentioned in the Quran 42 times. Every time it's mentioned, it's accompanied by this. Mm -hmm. You're like, well, how someone, just, who sat down and thought about all that? <laughs> he knows the Quran very well. He said about this verse, about the dua of the wife of Fir'aun. What was her name? Asiya. This dua of her, she said, My Lord, build for me with you a house in Jannah. He said, notice how in her dua, she mentioned with you. She mentioned the neighbor before mentioning the house. Did you see that? She said... Oh my Lord, build for me endek. Means with you. Huh? 
a house in Jannah. She didn't say, make for me a house near to you. She said, make, build for me with you, next to you, a house in Jannah. So she mentioned being near to Allah before mentioning the house in Jannah. He said, and, and in this regard, al-jar qabal al dar The neighbor comes before the abode, the actual structure. You understood that? That's just a side benefit. The last thing, the last part of this hadith is the statement of the Prophet Man kana yu'minu billahi wa bil akhir fal yukrim dayfahu. Whoever believes in Allah on the last day, let him be good to his guests. Let him treat his guests good. Uh, we talked about the neighbor and now we're talking about the guest. Abdiyatha, hosting, this is a part of the sunnah of all the prophets, not mm -hmm. just our prophet. Mm -hmm. Look what Allah says. Hal ataka hadithu dayfi Ibrahim al mukramin ida dakhalu alayhi faqalu salama. Qala salamun qawmun munkarun faraha ila ahlihi faja'a bi'idlin samin. Has there reached you the story of the honored guest of Abraham? When they entered upon him and they said, Salama, meaning they gave him the greeting. And by the way, this is from the, the etiquettes, the adab, when you go to someone's house. Mm -hmm. You go to someone's house. Who's there? Salamu alaikum, Brother Bashir. Huh? Give salam first before you enter the house. When you enter the homes, you enter, you give salam to the people first. Greet the people first. Right? They greeted him, and then he responded back with the greeting. Sometimes today you see something very strange with Muslim, some Muslims. They don't, the salam is like, uh, they see each other, they call each other on the phone, they, they, they start the conversation, they don't give salam. They end the conversation, they don't give salam. They see each other outside, they don't give salam. This is a, do you not know this is this greeting, the, 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 the great value of this greeting? Mm -hmm. Saying assalamu alaikum. It's dua. It's not just a greeting. It's a supplication. Right? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And then, as Allah said, when you are greeted with a greeting, respond with a like thereof or better. So if someone says assalamu alaikum, you have to at least respond with wa alaikum salam. They say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You have to at least respond with wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. If they respond, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, you have to at least respond with wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There is a narration from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Uh, if my memory serves me correct, Shaykh al Bani said the narration is Hassan. When someone would say to him, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, he would respond with wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa maghfiratu. Wa maghfiratu. Meaning, May the salam of Allah be upon you, the rahmah of Allah be upon you, wa barakatuh, his blessings be upon you, wa maghfiratu, and his forgiveness. This was the action of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Allahu alam. Taking care of the guests. Uh, we talked about this before, but this is something, um, this is a, a sunnah that you don't see here in the West the way you see it back home. Even among some of the Muslims who are not that strong in their religion, you still see this sunnah is still there. I remember when I was in Pakistan in 97, it was the first time I ever saw something like this. I, one of my professors, he took us from the house. We went to visit some brother. It was just a random night. He called the brother up. He said, I'm coming with uh, some of the students. Uh, we're going to be there in about 15 minutes. So we get to the house. The brother invited us inside. Again, you know, as we mentioned before, the, the host is for him to tell you where to sit, to direct you, right? So he said, come sit over here. We went. It was this big, long spread with all kinds of fruits, any fruit, all every fruit you can think of, all these fruits. And I'm thinking, wow, this is a lot of fruit. How much money he spent on this? This is a lot of money. And that was just the introduction. <laughs> that wasn't the meal. He came out. With the big, huge plate with rice and the lamb on top, it was, it was so much. And then, you know, the, and 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 then one thing that's interesting, as I said before, here in the West, 
In the South, they don't do this, but in the North, this is very common. You hear people do this. When you come to their house, the first thing they say, would you like anything to drink? Mm -hmm. You don't ask your guests, <laughs> do you want something to drink? Of mm -hmm. course he wants something <laughs> to drink. You don't ask. Some They say, if you ask him if you want something to eat, that means you're bakhil, you're stingy. Because most people, if you say, do you want something to eat, they don't want to inconvenience you, so they're going to say, what? No, it's okay, brother, we're okay. My best. Relax. Yani, we didn't come to inconvenience. So what did you do? The, the ayah said, he went to his family, and then he came back, bi'ijlin samin. He came back with a fat lamb. Huh? He didn't come with the cheap stuff. He didn't come with the leftovers, even though it's okay to give leftovers. There's nothing wrong with that. The point is, is you give your guests the best. You give them good. You treat them well. You give them food. You give them drink. You know? And if you're going to ask them anything, you tell them what you have and then let them choose. So we have we have this, we have this, we have that. Mm. We, we, which one would you like? If you're going to ask anything. Mm. But other than that, just come with it. Come with it. You know? And, and, and the beautiful thing about this, if the people that you have at your house, if they are on the sunnah, what are they going to do when they eat your food? They're going to make dua. What's the dua you say when you, when you come to someone's house and they give you the food? What's the dua? We, what, who can tell us what dua in the sunnah we can say? Yeah, this, this is dua. You can say, there's, there's more than one. Anyone? You can say, أَفْطَرَ عِنْدَكُمْ الصَّائِمُونَ وَأَكَلَ طَعَامَكُمْ الْأَبْرَارِ وَصَلَّتْ عَلَيْكُمْ الْمَلَائِكَةِ You can say, أَفْطَرَ عِنْدَكُمْ الصَّائِمُونَ May those who are fasting break their fast with you. And may the righteous people eat your food. And may the angels supplicate for you. Another dua you can say, that dua you say, you say while addressing them. Another, you can say, "Allahumma barak lahum fi ma fi ma razaqtahum, wa fir lahum wa rahamhum." Oh Allah, bless them and what you have provided them. Wa fir lahum wa rahamhum. Forgive them and have mercy on them. They make making du'a for your host, right? This is a big a big deal. Yani Subhanallah. Taking care of the guests. Feeding them. Uh, if they're travelers, you know, uh, some people understand something wrong. There's a hadith that says that your your guest, your guest has uh, over you three days and three nights, right? This hadith is authentic. And you go to the books where the scholars explain this. They say that because in those days, if people were coming uh, from long distances and they were coming to uh, Medina, they were coming to Mecca, they didn't have, those days they didn't have hotels like that at that time. There, there was no hotels. That came later. Right? So they have the rights on you. If someone comes today, we have hotels. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't, this hadith doesn't mean that you have to let that person sleep in your house. Right? But even if he's your guest, and you want to honor him, you put him in a hotel. And by the way, I prefer to put people in a hotel. You know why? Because they may be shy. In a hotel, you have a lot of uh, freedom. You can stretch. And you can be free in such a way that you can't be in someone else's house. So if, if you want, you can pay for his uh, uh, hotel accommodations. You, know, you can do that for him. You can take care of his food. That's why when we have guests, when we have guests coming from afar, whether it's for a conference or a masjid, we take care of them. We make sure we, we, when they come, they have a place to stay. We do all those things for them. That is their rights on us. Mm -hmm. That is their rights on us. Um, so taking care of the guests, being good to the neighbors. And when we talk about the neighbors, by the way, as we mentioned in a verse, what is included in your neighbors are the people who live in the house with you. Mm -hmm. Your wife is your neighbor. Your children are neighbors. They are the closest neighbors to you. Mm -hmm. Why am I saying that? Because one thing we have as a problem, many Muslims, we'll take real good care <laughs> of the outside <laughs> people <laughs> and we will neglect <laughs> the people on home. Mm -hmm. There could be a family member who is in dire need of help. We won't help them. But if someone comes from outside, we will go broke. Mm -hmm. We will borrow money to make sure that 
And this is, I won't name, I won't name what culture, this is very common in, but because in their culture, the worst thing you can say about a person is that he's stingy. Mm. And so that means what? A person can fall into riyah, can fall into showing off when it comes to hosting from an angle he doesn't even realize. Mm -hmm. Right? Taking care of the guests is very important. Taking care of our neighbors are very important. And again, the root of all this, the foundation of all this is belief in Allah and the last day. Mm -hmm. Belief in Allah and the last day. So that means what? Belief, aqidah, and action, they go hand in hand. Belief and character go hand in hand. Akmalul mu'minina imanan, ahsanuhum khuluqa. The most complete of the believers in iman are the best of them in character. مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَفْقَلُ فِي الْمِزَانِ مِنْ حُسْنِ الْخُلُقِ There is nothing that is more weightier in the scale than good character. So if you say and you claim that you're upon sunnah, you're upon salafiyyah, you follow the way of the salaf, right? But you don't have good character. You're nasty with your mouth. You're quick to become angry. You're stingy. You don't respect your neighbors. Then where where is this aqidah you're claiming to have? Mm -hmm. Where's the fruits of that aqidah? Mm -hmm. If you don't have this type of character, this is the problem. Sheikh Al Albani he used to say, "I used to believe that the main problem with the Muslim Ummah is a deficiency in aqidah." He said, "But I have regret I have regretfully come to the conclusion that the problem is not only aqidah but it is character, mm -hmm. character." Yes. So this is something we have to work on. Yes, character. And this is how we become beautiful. Your character is what makes you really beautiful, not your looks. <laughs> As the Prophet ﷺ, when he would make dua, Allahumma ahsan ta khalqi, O Allah, you have beautified, perfected my physical creation. Hassan khuluqi, make beautiful my character. This is the true beauty. Any questions? So, yes, brother. So, not to be sarcastic, but the reason, the reason I ask, you know, a lot of people is like, the guests that come over to my house, ask them, do you like anything? Because these days, like, a lot of the guests are very picky. Like, <laughs> for example, <laughs> the best thing you can offer them is water, but like, if you have, let's say, for example, ginger ale or Pepsi, they might be like, no, I don't like ginger ale. Like, just using an example, like, a lot of people, some people have allergies, some people have such and such. In that situation, what, what do you do? Well, this, 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 so this is something, this is a skill, a good skill that is good to have. Some, in some cases, we don't know the people that are coming. Mm -hmm. They're coming for the first time. But in many cases, we have a general idea of the, of the situation, the culture of the person that's coming mm -hmm. to my home. So I personally wouldn't offer my guests soda but if it's a bunch of youth, mm. American youth, I might offer them some soda because it's common with them, mm. right? But what's, what's something that you could always go to and you can never fail? Tea. Mm. <laughs> Tea. Have some shy. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Some water. Some people bring the water, mm. right? If maybe you have some nice juice, no problem. Um, and I, I saw in my, one of my friends in Mecca, and I, saw that, I noticed that this is common in the Middle East. You know, they have a saying, a proverb, proverb that says, Us gharul qawm khadimuhum. The youngest of the people is the servant of those people. Mm -hmm. So when you go over there, you'll notice that the young, my, when I sit with my cup of tea, the young guy comes and fills the cup. And I notice when I'm sitting there, I'm drinking my tea, he's still there and he's looking at my cup. <laughs> His father taught him. Someone taught him. To look at the cup and don't let the cup go empty. Mm -hmm. So when you see the cup gets about right here, you come and bring some more. You don't say, would you like some more? You just come and bring some more. Mm -hmm. That is something. You, you go to any home in Mecca and there are uh, uh, children, you're going to see that. If there's no children, someone from the adults is going to do it. It has to happen. It's, it's very important. Not just Mecca. Egypt, wherever you go, mm -hmm. Africa, very, very important. This is, this is considered aib. If you don't Take care of that. The Moroccans, they have something. Anyone ever see the Moroccans, how they pour the tea? Mm -hmm. They got a special little uh, uh, thing with it. They, 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 they pour it like this, and then they, 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 it's like a, and when they pour it, it has to make a, a, a like a wreath. Mm -hmm. 
Now, this cultural thing, mm. this is not mandatory, but it's cultural. <laughs> in, Islam, in, in Islam, what? We can practice the culture. As long as the culture is not contradicting uh, Sunnah, we can do that. If I got a Moroccan brother to come to my house and I know how to do it, I'm going to pour it like that. I'm going to make him feel like he at home. Well, okay. Right? If I got a Somali coming to my house, I'm going to make sure I have some bananas. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Somalis like the bananas. You're, mm. and you, you get the what I'm trying to say, right? Yeah. It all depends. You know your guests. There are general safe things to offer people. Mm. It's not a sin to say, would you like something? What would you like? I'm not saying it's a sin or something like that. But I'm saying the, the, the point is, is that we have to get away from what a lot of us are doing. A lot of us, sometimes we don't, we, we're got, we've gotten so far away from the sunnah mm -hmm. that when people come to our homes, we don't give them that sunnah treatment. By the way, I have a question for you. Isha is coming in later now. Do you all want to continue doing the class immediately after Isha or do you want to do it after Maghrib? After Maghrib. After Maghrib. After Maghrib. Yeah. That's good. I'm, that's okay for me. But I'm thinking about you because I, I notice the time and then I, don't, I feel bad when I stay too long and then brothers do, brothers may want to leave but they feel shy to leave because they don't want to feel like they're doing and it's okay if you have to leave. So what we'll do inshallah and I'll let brother Norman know he can put it in the, the masjid group chat that next week we'll start after Maghrib. Sorry, sorry, we don't that much late yet. We go to bed like 10 o'clock, so it's okay. Yeah, but it's a school night, though. It's a school night. Huh? A couple brothers asked for it. It's a, it's a school night, you know, and uh, right now, now it's like 8.28. I don't know about y'all. My children, they're supposed to be in, school, in bed before 8.28. It's not school night. So we do it after Maghrib, inshallah. Inshallah. And, 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 and keep in mind, we're only going to do this maybe four more times before Ramadan. Mm -hmm. Ramadan is expected to start March 11th, inshallah. We're not going to have this class during Ramadan. We'll, we'll resume after, inshallah. All right. Anyone who wants uh, the handouts, if you have my number, you can just text me your email address. If you don't, give your email address to Brother Norman. Brother Norman can give it to me and I will send you. I have the attachment and an email attachment already. I can send it to you. But this was a lot. This is actually five papers. All right. Thank you for coming and being patient with me and listening. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanakallah. Wa bihamdik. Shalom an la ilaha ilaha ilaha. Astaghfirullah wa atubu alayhi. Assalamu alaikum.